Hello, ladies and gents, and welcome back to War Thunder with Fluffy Bacon. Today, we'll be checking out the changes that War Thunder Patch 1.57 has brought us. We'll start with the tanks and progress onto the aircraft and the maps. First of all, we have the T-26 E-1 Super Pershing Heavy Tank for the Americans. Not a premium, as you would expect. It is a rank 4 battle rating 6.7 heavy tank. Let's take a look at it. Here it is. Very, very powerful armor. If we check the armor stats, then the front of the turret already has 100 and 14.3 millimeters 101 and once again 101 with additional 80 millimeters and on the side sloped structural steel 38.1 on the top you have some structural 15 and 10 millimeter steel that's not going to hit anything critical on the front already thick armor 101 millimeters Additional two armor plates, 38.1 millimeters, 38.1, and 38.1. And at the angle that you're shooting this at, this is effectively 60 millimeters of armor. So, a very, very tough tank from the front. Sides, not so tough, 76 millimeters. The turret is still very well sloped. And the rear is a hundred meter, a hundred millimeters. So, a very tough tank, definitely for a fan of the American heavy tanks. Swiftly moving on to Germany, we have the German open tank destroyer, open hull tank destroyer. We have the Panzer Jäger one. Equipped with the Czech 4.7 centimeter pack gun. Not much armor as you would expect. Low tier tank destroyer. 14, 13, 13 millimeters all around. So, you need to stay hidden with this tank. X ray. You have a driver down here and the commander and loader on the sides of your tank so it's very easy to take you out one shot say for example here will penetrate right through headshot your driver and probably hit your commander and loader in the stomach also you have ammo absolutely everywhere down back down at the bottom of the tank some stored up Right there and a very compact vehicle but still rather rather easy to kill so the dicker max which means fat max in German has the 10.5 centimeter k18 cannon armor wise Still only 50 millimeters, 12 millimeters on the top there. The gunman flip, well, yeah, it's a gunman, but 30 millimeters only. Up here, 10, sides, 20. So nothing you're really going to be bouncing shots with. But it does have this great big 10.5 centimeter gun. You can see the fox ear goggles poking out. If we click x ray, yeah, that's the commander, that's the loader, aimer, machine gunner. Boy, this thing ain't got a machine gun. Driver. Seriously, why do you have a machine gunner when there is no machine gun on the tank? First of all, it's not animated. 
And it's not even on the actual tank in the stats. Rank 3, battle rating 4.3. And at rank 3 with a battle rating of 5.0. We have the 8.8 .8 pack 43-1 Nashorn. Armor-wise, even weaker. You have 10 centimeters. The lower places is the thickest. And here, I believe, protecting the driver. 30 millimeters with some tracks of 15 millimeters. Rolled homogeneous armor, just 10 millimeters all around. Even more so than with the 10.5 centimeter Dicker Max. You do want need to watch where you're going and your armor. It's actually quite fast in its max speed, 47 kilometers per hour. Or at least that's what it's given us. These are big shells. You have your aimer here. Then you have the loader and the commander. And then, a, once again, a machine gunner, despite the fact that this thing has no machine gun. So, you don't know what's up with those machine gunners. If any of you do know, leave it down below in the comments. Swiftly moving on to Russia, we have the KV-1S heavy tank at rank 2 with a battle rating of 4.3. Here it is. It is armed with a 76mm ZIS-5 cannon and a single 7.62mm DT machine gun. Right there. This was actually uh, an improved KV-1 by the name with an improved engine, because the Russians were having problems with the speed of their KV-1s. Though it didn't go up much, it was still definite improvement. Armor-wise... 50mm, 60mm, 75mm, 75 The turret is strong, 85mm, 75 At the angle, it's n nearing 100 nearing 100. If you do want to penetrate this thing, aim right there. From the front of the turret, aim at those rivets right there. Because that is the weakest point. Only 50 millimeters. 50... Always gonna be around 50 when you are aiming. This here, at that angle though, not there. You wanna aim up here at the rivets. Because this is already going back into the hundreds, but here, it's staying around 50. If you go in at that angle, you're having armor that's equaling to nearly 200 millimeters. Same over here. Three, over 375. If you hit here, no tank is going to penetrate that. Side armor, 60 millimeters. Same as the rear up here. It's only 30 millimeters. A weakly armored top, as most tanks, only 30 millimeters of steel at the top. Traditional. Following on, we have the T44-100. Right here, in the Russian tech tree. Just take a moment to admire the beauty of this tank. Okay, moving on, it has the infamous Russian 100mm D10T along with two machine guns up here 112.7mm DSHK and a 7.62 DT although it looks like it has two it's x-ray. It doesn't show me. It only shows me the main gun. 
you have your driver, your aimer, commander, and loader. Armor-wise, it's T44 style, very thick turret front, 110 millimeters and 120. Sides are 100. This is 90 up front. These sides have extra side skirts protection, only six millimeters though. Relating on to 75 millimeter sides. The rear is 45 millimeters and at the top 15. But this thing, go hull down and use that very, very good gun. Because really, if anybody hits you here, it's going to be. I'm, up here, I'm getting 360. Down here, 200. And the sides, it's no better. Here, I'm getting over 500 millimeters. So, get hull down and use this excellent gun. Let's just check out the uh, ammunition types. High explosive fragmentation, you have the BR-41 2Ps. These will go through at 1000 meters, 98 degree attack, 169 millimeters penetration. So, a very, very good gun. And last but not least, we have the 94KM ZIS-12 chassis. Wood is the strongest armor this tank carries. Cannot really classify this as a tank. 15 millimeters of armor. Absolutely legendary. X-ray wise, you have the commander and the driver up front, and the aimer and the loader here. You have two 20mm 72k cannons, which, by some bizarre coincidence, are exactly the same on the 72k gas MM. Except this has only one, and it's a slightly different chassis. The ZIS-12 chassis, 94km, rank 3, battle rating 3.7. Last but not least, we have Great Britain, who are receiving more development in their Armored Forces tech tree. First of all, we have the Falcon SPAA. The Falcon AASAAS. -A uh, it's beautiful, and its ornament is very, very good. It has two 30mm HSS 831L cannons, two of them. Firing 600 rounds per minute. Unfortunately, it reloads for 65 seconds, so you'll fire since they have 620 rounds. So you have one minute fire time and then one minute reload. Armor wise, 10 millimeters to 12.7 millimeters, all around going to 6 millimeters. It's an SPAA. The drivers up front, aimer, and commander. Modification wise, it can carry high explosive and settery tracers, armor piercing high explosive and settery, and armor piercing discarding sabo, self destroying. Yeah, very, very good ammo, and it will do a lot of damage, as this is a 30mm gun. For those of you British SPAA fans, this is definitely a vehicle that you want to get to. Swiftly moving on, we have the Conway. Tier 5 British Tank Destroyer. FB4004 Conway. With a 120mm ordnance QF TK L1A1 cannon. And a single 7.7, 7.92 Brezzo machine gun. Where is that located? Say coaxial. There. Right there. Armor 
wise, the turret front is very, very well armored. 140 degrees, and 140 degrees, 140 millimeters, and 132 millimeters. Although it is completely flat. The sides, more rounded, 95 millimeters all around. And the front of the hull, 76 millimeters. But we're not here for the armor, or the speed, or the maneuverability. We are here for the gun. This amazing gun. With stock ammunition at 1,000 meters, penetration of 354 millimeters. Carries 20 rounds before you need to reload your whole ammunition supply. And last but not least, the Chieftain Mark III medium tank, although this was in truth Britain's first attempt at creating a main battle tank. Boy, is she beautiful. Armed with a single 120mm ordnance BL TKL-11 cannon, a single 12.7mm L-21A1 machine gun, and an L-8A1 7.62. Both coaxial, I presume? Yes. There they are. There's one primary or secondary, and there's the second. Armor-wise, the turret is 215 millimeters in places. 220 even. Very, very strong turret. 250 millimeters. Wow. Hull armor, 86, 70, 110. Not that much hull armor, but your turret armor is amazing. We've seen some x-ray, but here's some more x-ray. Shells stored in the front, so if you do manage to penetrate over here, which, let's see, that's only about 100 millimeters of penetration, you need, well, 200 over there. But around 100, 200 millimeters of penetration, you will be able to, no problem, hit that ammunition. This was the problem. This engine, its top speed is listed as 49 kilometers per hour, but the engine was not very powerful. So you can dream of going that fast. Crew-wise, driver, loader, commander, aimer, aimer, and yeah, it carries a lot of ammo, 53 rounds for this glorious, glorious gun modification-wise. L15A3 shots at 1,000 meters, 389 millimeters of penetration. Awesome tank battle rating, 8.0. But well, let's move on to aviation. American heavy fighter fans rejoice because you now have two versions of the P-61 Black Widow heavy fighter. Rank 3, 4.3 battle rating, and rank 3, 3.7 battle rating. Modification-wise, the non-premium version can carry 4,000 pounds of bombs for the 12.7mm tur armor targets or universal and for the 20s, universal ground targets and stealth. The premium version does not carry any bombs. It only has the 20s and the 12.7s. Taking a look at this beautiful aircraft. I'll let her just gaze in the glory there. Just admire. Look at that cockpit. Yeah. 
armor wise, a lot of armor around here. We have 9.5 millimeter steel, 12.7 millimeter steel scattered around, and then 60 millimeter bulletproof glass in two places, taking care of both the pilot and the gunner and the third gun. What are you doing here, buddy? Guess he's just chilling. And, of course, you can carry 4,000 pounds of bombs. Which is a lot. That's all for America, though. Let's move on. Germany, a very diverse tree. But there has been an improvement, even to the German tech tree. First of all, we have the TA-152C variant, after the H1, same battle rating, which leads on to the 162A2. It has one 30mm mounted in the nose, I believe, and then four 20mm. An improvement of two 20mm. According to War Thunder, this is a mid-altitude dogfighting aircraft. A powerful engine, 730 kilometers per hour max speed. Turn time not very good, as following all the uh, 190 Doras and TA-152s. Armor-wise, actually very, very good armor. You have a 15mm engine cowling, 5mm steel over and below. 8mm steel, a 20mm backrest, and a 70mm bulletproof glass defending the pilot. X-ray, the pilot, fuel tanks. There is the 30mm, and then the 20mm are in the nose. Then we have three variants of the Dornier 335. The AO, the A1, and the B2. The AO is here. 130 and 220s. Beautiful aircraft. First twin backwards prop, I believe, in War Thunder. Um, the A1. Same ornament. I believe these also carry a bomb bay. Yep, two two fifties and a five hundred. And last but not least, the premium will cost you 4,880 gold needles and this carries an additional two thirties and can still carry that armament. Air targets for the twenties and armor targets for the thirties. They have AP T rounds. I just need to take this thing for this. Here she is. Now, one thing most people don't realize once we get while we get these engines warmed up is how big this aircraft is. I mean, those are tents that people sleep in. But anyway, let's get this thing in the air. There's cockpit view. Man, she is beautiful. Track the gear. I am game, I am. Fairly slow though, I was expecting her to be faster.
but it is an enormous and very, very heavy aircraft. Bombay, right there you can see the Bombay doors. And I believe you can also carry some under the wings. Well, I kind of regret what I said earlier about the speed of this aircraft. Those twin props look beautiful. You've got your engine, I believe, right there and there. And you can fly with only one engine. Although this isn't a very maneuverable aircraft. Weaponry wise. Two twenties and three thirties. My god. Let's see, one pass with the 30s. One hit was all it took. Just imagine this coming towards you. That's gonna leave a mark on just about anything. Ooh, that's a lot of firepower. But anyway, one more aircraft for the Germans while I continue flying around here. I'm not I'm not gonna show you this. I can actually show you this. But I will put a picture up screen after this so you guys can see it. That would be the Focke Wolf 189 Uhu, which will be an event aircraft. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on to the Russians. There is only one Russian aircraft coming in patch 1.57. It is the Russian MBR-2 flying boat, which is going to be an event aircraft. All right, ladies and gentlemen, moving on swiftly to the British. They have, first of all, at a battle rating of 1.7 the much-expected Sunderland Mark 3A. A very, very large armament, actually. Four forward-firing, player-controlled 7.7mm Browns, along with a single twin AI-controlled turret. On the back, slightly off to the right, another twin AI-controlled turret. And at the back, a quadruple AI control turret. Armor wise, this thing has no armor, although you would expect it to. And x ray, this is what makes this aircraft quite strong and invulnerable to low, small caliber machine guns. Because the crew is very well spread out. There's your pilot, there's a gunner, there's another gunner. This is the third gunner. There's another gunner in there. I don't know what these two gunners are doing. They're probably just chilling. Or one of them's a bombardier. Modification wise, there are is only one bomb modification, which will allow you to carry four five hundred pounds. You get for offensive, universal, tracer, stealth, and armor targets, and universal. The last and second, but definitely not least, is the Sea Venom FAW 20. Here it is, a beautiful aircraft. And there's Nigel, he's two pilots, by x-ray. There is another pilot, two pilots, which helps because if you do get, if one of your pilots gets taken out, you can still fly. It has one bit of armor down here, three millimeters. I'm guessing that's protecting the engine.
All right, moving on to the Japanese. They have only one aircraft added. That is the Ki 83 heavy fighter. Rank 4, battle rating 6.0. Let's take a look. Beautiful aircraft, armament of 230s and 220s. And Nigel, the gunner, don't know why, because the pilot has an aim sight right there. I'll put a zoom in on the screen for you guys. So, I don't know why they have Nigel the Gunner back there, but okay, armor-wise, some 12mm steel, 60mm bulletproof glass, and Nigel gets his own 8mm steel backrest. Congratulations, Nigel. Modification-wise, 250s, and ground targets for both the offensive, for both the 20s and the 30s, along with universal tracers and stealth for both. Nothing much more than that. Top speed 674 kilometers per hour. So let's move on to the maps, ladies and gentlemen.